Srimad Bhagavad Gita, chapter 12, verses 18 and 19. He who is the same to friend and foe, and also in honor and dishonor, who is the same in heat and cold, and in pleasure and pain, who is free from attachment, to whom censor and praise are equal, who is silent, content with anything, homeless, steady-minded, full of devotion, that man is dear to me. The question says, Sri Krishna here is giving a lot of importance to equanimity. How to develop this attribute in one's mind? Also, what does it mean to have a mind full of devotion? Equanimity does not really mean giving equal importance or equal value to heat and cold, to happiness and sorrow. It is not about looking at day and night equally. It is not about looking at friend and foe equally. It is about not looking at these pairs of opposites at all. That's equanimity. If you look at friend and foe, then you cannot be equanimous towards them. That's certain. Because a friend by definition is a friend. That's why you're looking at him. Why else are you looking at him? A friend by definition is a friend. And a friend carries value for you. That's the only reason why you're looking at him. Otherwise, why would you look at him? And a foe by definition is a foe. And by definition, the foe carries value for you. And that's the reason you're looking at him. Otherwise, why would you look at him? There are so many other things to look at. So if you start looking at a friend and a foe, you cannot be equal towards them. Therefore, equanimity is not to look at these two in an equal way or same or similar way. Equanimity is about looking somewhere else. Equanimity is about being absent to these pairs of dualities. Heat and cold mean the same to me because I am bothered with neither heat nor cold. So how much does heat mean to me? Zero. How much does cold mean to me? Zero. Therefore heat equals cold. It's not as if I want to establish H is equal to C. No, that's not my objective because neither do I bother for H nor do I bother for C. So H is equal to C is not a priority with me at all. My priority is something else. And that leaves me with no priority to give to H or C. So how much does H receive from me? Heat? Zero. How much does C receive from me? Cold? Zero. Because both of these receive nothing from me, hence in my eyes they become equal because they don't exist in my eyes at all. Hmm? It's almost like saying, I'm equally good at maths and biology. How? Because I study commerce. I know neither maths nor bio. That's equanimity. You are in the commerce section. So how do you pass in front of the math section? Nonchalantly. How do you pass in front of the bio section? Pretty indifferently. Not bothered. That's equanimity. My section is somewhere else. I belong there. I have no interest here. Hmm? So that's equanimity. If you want to practice equanimity by experiencing heat and cold in a similar way, you'd only be mastering hypocrisy. That's what you would practice. How not to display reactions when experiencing heat and when experiencing cold. Because the experience is there. All that you can win over is your Reaction, the manifestation of your reaction, that you can stop. 
but the fact is heat still means a lot to you that's why you went to experience heat cold still means a lot to you why the hell do you have so much time available to experience this and that and then say neither of them mean anything to me why are you not found busy with your own section you should be found there right and that's equanimity hmm? therefore the best way to practice equanimity is love you must be occupied with your beloved and then you become indifferent towards everything else this indifference is another name for equanimity getting it then what does it mean to have a mind full of devotion it means nothing the mind is anyway full of devotion mind is another name for devotion it's just that in absence of discretion devotion becomes quite blind and mad the mind is always devoted to something or is it not look at your history look at this day to day has there been a single moment when the mind was not devoted to something or else the mind is always devoted the proof is mind is always with something the mind always has an object to be with correct so the mind is devoted it's just that the mind does not know what it really wants therefore it gets devoted to all the little and stupid things you don't really need to have a mind with devotion devotion is there you need to have discretion you need to understand what is it that is worthy of your devotion not everything deserves your devotion at the same time anything that you get devoted to would ultimately lead you to truth but do you have 10000 years to live how many years do you have in your current physical form in this mortal body you have some 10 20 40 years to live and if you get devoted to something that will take 10000 years to take you to truth are you doing yourself a favor that's the thing that you need to watch out against discretion is the word 